First Nations people have lived sustainably with abundant animals like Jewelby, Crocker and others across central New South Wales and out across Australia. And that is the vision that we have for this country again, thriving populations of Australian wildlife, sharing our land and respecting our land. So I'd like to now welcome you uh, and welcome the Minister for the Environment, Tanya Plibersek, to come up and announce the Threatened Species Action Plan. Well, uh, thanks very much, Cameron, for inviting us and welcoming us to the zoo once again. We know that Taronga does amazing work in conservation. Uh, you can see behind us the bilby, and Taronga Zoo, of course, is part of a very successful breeding and release program for bilbies, but it's not just bilbies. I think we might pop into the corroboree frogs. Uh, I've seen them in the past as well and other species that Taronga has helped bring back from the brink of extinction. Uh, of course, our Threatened Species Action Plan is an ambitious and a specific plan to stop further extinctions in Australia. We learnt from the State of the Environment report, which I released some months ago, that the state of the Australian environment is bad and getting worse. We are the mammal uh, the mammal extinction capital of the world. We've seen around 100 species lost uh, in the time since colonisation, and we absolutely have to turn that around. If we keep doing what we're doing, we'll keep getting the same results. This plan is a more ambitious plan. It includes a target of zero new extinctions. It delivers on our target of protecting 30% of our land and 30% of our oceans by 2030. The Prime Minister and other world leaders have signed up to that ambitious conservation target. By protecting more habitat, we can protect the homes of these precious plants and animals and the landscapes that mean so much to Australians. So this new plan uh, as well as drawing much more on First Nations knowledge, um, also, uh, also prioritises 110 species and 20 places. Now, this doesn't mean that we don't look at other threatened species, but it means that these prioritised species create a kind of halo effect. By focusing in on these species and these places, we have the biggest chance of success. Uh, if we focus on these species, we also protect the species around them, the ones that are interdependent and living in the same environment. And by protecting 20 priority places that give us a really broad range of Australian landscapes and ecosystems, we can create little Noah's arcs, places that we can be confident we are returning to healthy populations of plants and animals. Now, of course, um, that means extra investment and the Australian government went to the last election with a commitment to invest $224.5 million on threatened species, $1.2 billion on the Great Barrier Reef and to make a number of other environmental investments. But it's not just about what government does. Of course, this plan has been created um, in cooperation uh, with scientists and conservationists um, working with incredible conservation organisations like Taronga Zoo. Um, there's also a real opportunity for ordinary Australians to play their part. Lots of Australians are involved in organisations like Landcare, they donate to environmental groups, and they look after their own backyards. And, you know, one of the features of this plan is to deal better with feral species like cats and foxes. I mean, one of the, the best contributions people can make is keeping their cats inside, not letting uh, those, you know, cats we know, um, cats and foxes together kill an average of seven million Australian animals every night. So we have to do much better in dealing with feral species and also introduce weeds like gamba grass, particularly across northern Australia, that really change our landscapes and make them hostile to the creatures that have depended on them. So um, I, I'm very pleased to be uh, releasing this report today. Uh, I, I really hope Australians take the opportunity to, um, to have a read of the report uh, and work in partnership with the Australian Government to protect our precious plants and animals and precious places for future generations. 
Any questions? Um, Nick, could you talk us through some of the commitments and targets of the action plan and what we can expect to see in the next couple of years? Yeah, look, I think um, the no new extinctions target is really important. It does focus our mind. When we know that a, a species on the is on the brink of extinction, it means we can make sure that we're protecting its habitat, uh, making sure that that uh, species has the opportunity to um, survive and recover and rebuild. After the black summer bushfires and the, the drought that preceded it, the, the floods we've had since, a lot of our habitats uh, and our species are under extreme pressure. So really focusing in on those species that are on the brink is very important. The 30% the of oceans and 30% of land conserved by 2030 is also really important. We're talking about an extra 50 million hectares of landscape that we need to find and to um, manage in a way that protects uh, protects the landscape and the species that depend on it. That's a very ambitious target, a very ambitious target, but it brings us in line with other global leaders in the environment. And I'm really pleased that our Prime Minister has committed uh, to that target. Um, I'd also like to say that w we know that climate change is one of the biggest threats to our natural environment. And that's why it's so important that one of the first measures introduced by the new government was more ambitious targets on climate change. Great. Um, how do you plan to deliberate on mining expansion in keeping with this action? Well, it, it is very important that we recognise Australia has a continued need to develop. We do have a, a responsibility to make sure that Australians have jobs, that uh, we're able to build um, the new roads and housing and you know, solar and wind farms that will power the nation. But we need to do it in a way that is environmentally responsible. We need to do it in a way uh, that gives business faster decisions but gives the environment better protections. And that will be the focus of our environmental law reform. Uh, we'll be introducing new environmental laws into the parliament next year. There are a number of proposals to expand pits, uh, bike times and even reopen mines in the Hunter Valley. Is today's announcement a blanket no from your government if speaking to be correct? Uh, it, it's absolutely not a blanket no, but we, we know that our environmental laws at the moment are not fit for purpose. Our environmental laws at the moment are slow and cumbersome for business and don't give plants and animals and landscapes the protections they need. So we do need to reform our environmental laws. Professor Graham Samuel uh, did a very thorough review of the Environmental Protection and Biodiversity Conservation Act for the previous government. He made a number of very important recommendations. We're working through those recommendations at the moment and uh, our government will provide a response to the Samuel review by the end of the year. We'll use that response to inform the redesign of our environmental laws uh, will introduce those new laws into the parliament next year. Right now, we know that our environmental laws aren't working. They're not working for business and they're not working for the environment. We need to do better. One mine in particular in Mount Pleasant, um, near Musselbrook, a new species of lizard was identified only a few months ago, but it was approved by New South Wales authorities. How will your government manage the protection of this species and others well, I'm not going to make uh, comments about individual projects today, but I'll say this. Uh, we need to work cooperatively with state and territory governments to better protect our environment. Yes, to give faster decisions on projects, but also to better protect our environment. And I think there's a lot of goodwill and a lot of willingness there. And Australians made it very plain at the last election that they care about the environment. Um, you know, you see by the number of people who volunteer and donate to environmental organisations that Australians care about the environment. I think state governments realise that and uh, I'm very much looking forward to working cooperatively and in partnership with state governments to protect uh, our precious places. It's a biodiversity offset scheme which appeased the New South Wales Planning Authority from the changes to Mount Pleasant and Usco. And how will biodiversity offset management be strengthened at a national level? Yeah. 
Uh, well, again, I'm not going to comment on individual projects today, but I'll say this. We have businesses approaching us all the time as a government saying we are interested in, invest in, in investing in nature. And what we need is a scheme that gives us assurance, that gives us longevity for our investments. That's exactly, exactly what we're seeking to develop as a federal government, a nature market. Businesses get pressured by their customers. They have uh, pressure from their own staff. Uh, they want to show that they are investing in nature uh, because of that pressure, but also because it, international accounting is taking more and more notice of um, the, the, the nature impacts of businesses. Excuse me. We know that businesses are taking more and more account of their impact on the natural environment and that's why we want to create a nature market that businesses can invest in that will benefit nature. Government can't do this alone. We have to do it in partnership with the community and with businesses. Okay, last question. I might. How will you balance the jobs and economic <coughs> reliance? Sorry, I'll start that again. How will you balance the jobs and economic reliance of mining towns? Well, it, it's not beyond us as a nation. Of course, we want to see people working. We want to see a successful, prosperous, productive nation. But we have to do that at the same time as protecting our environment because our society and our economy depend on our, uh, on our natural environment too.